nine words that will change your life. I felt attacked, misrepresented, abandoned, wounded. Shelley and I were in the midst of a massive storm, one of the toughest seasons we've ever faced as leaders. Darts were flying at me from every direction. My heart was heavy and conflicted. The moment we had decided years ago to play in a local church, a friend was chillingly clear in his assessment of the journey we were embarking on. He said, it will be the hardest thing you've ever done. At the time, I brushed those words aside. We've done some pretty difficult things, I thought. But now, his words echoed in my mind. He was right. Building a kingdom family called the local church out of a tribe of mostly strangers was exposing my optimism. In other words, I thought we'd never have insider struggles like every other church. And even at 50 years of age, I was facing challenges now that were testing the limits of my experience. Now, the insider struggles were real, intense, personal. Bitterness and frustration worked overtime to get a foothold in my spirit. More than once, I wondered if it was worth it, and I wanted to pack it in and quit. One evening, a few months into that tumultuous stretch, I found myself at the top of our driveway furiously working away on a text message to a friend I could trust. Earlier in the afternoon, I had found out about something that had vindicated my case. I've always believed in the saying, you don't have to tell your side of the story, time will. On this day, it felt like time was telling the world that I was right. And obviously, I wasn't going to sit on good news. I wanted other people to know I was right, too. So I reached out to someone who'd stood with me in the struggle, someone who'd taken a few shots on my behalf. Wow, what a text it was. A lengthy masterpiece of angst and vindication, the tone of which went something like this. You're not going to believe what just happened. I'm not saying I was right, but but hey, it is what it is. Can you believe it? I mean, if you give things enough time, you'll see people's true colors, right? I mean, finally, blah, 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 blah. I pressed send and I waited. Literally, I just stared at the screen, looking for support to arrive. I wanted a reply that resounded with a hearty, Hey, Louie, I got your back. I knew you were right all along. I, I wanted a shoulder to cry on, a celebratory high five or fist bump, not the emoji kind. I needed actual words in return and lots of them. A moment passed. Another, I waited. Let's pause right there for a moment, and let's let the focus swing to your story. Have you ever sent a text like that? You don't need to be planning a church to be in a hard place. Everybody experiences tense circumstances where your mind is heavy and you feel like you're under attack. Times when you want to swing big and fight back or you want to give up. What do you do? How do you win the battle of your mind? The text that changed everything. When you're in a hard stretch filled with conflict and confusion, if you could just get your thoughts in order, you could probably figure out a way to proceed. But keeping a clear head is more difficult than it sounds. Maybe you're on the wrong side of someone else's harmful actions or words. Maybe the conflict comes from within. You feel abandoned, falsely attacked, hurt, defeated, tempted, lost. Your mood is low. Your mind is stressed. You're weary from the endless conversations you're having inside your head with friends, co-workers, family members, accusers. Conversations where you're always vindicated and their faults are exposed. It's easy at those times for fear or despair to set in. You find yourself constantly looking over your shoulder, wondering if someone's out to get you. You struggle with your emotions. You snap in anger. You break down in tears. It's not uncommon to give in to those dark.